at uh, 8.33. We welcome you back to the program with co-hosts, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy, always a pleasure to have you along. Great to be here. Thank you, Rob. And uh, Maria Lawrenson as well, who we've run out of nicknames for. Yeah, uh, we're I, just oh, calling her Maria now. Yeah, there's just like a whole host of them. Yeah. So you might as well just go with my name. I like maybe uh, Truckin' Mama because you're sitting up <laughs> tall like a, like a trucker in a semi today. There I go. What do you think there about that? <laughs> there you go. Our guest in this segment is Ken Reed. And, uh, you know... Ken, from uh, his time as a member of the House of Delegates and uh, now, of course, seeking statewide office in uh, West Virginia. Ken, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, you made a decision to uh, go for uh, one of the uh, larger offices uh, about a year ago, if I remember, correct? That's correct. About a year ago, we decided that uh, I think I'd be a good fit for the Secretary of State's office. And you were the first one to declare for that office, if I recall. That I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not positive usually you always have like one or two people that out in the middle of clay county somewhere to, 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 to apply for these things i, I can't recall I if i was the first, the first or not but i was pretty close to the top of the yeah the heap there yeah uh why secretary of state i know we covered this about a year ago or so but it's uh, fresh again yeah i think uh, secretary of state that office i i like public uh, service uh, and uh, i think that when i look at these higher offices I always think that uh, the people applying for those jobs should have a background or some type of skill set that fits them. Like, I always thought the treasurer should be an accountant. You know, mm -hmm. it's, makes sense. it makes sense. And uh, with Secretary of State's office, their, their biggest uh, duty is actually the business part of it. And um, I've dealt with the Secretary of State's office for 20 plus years, and uh, I think I would fit in very well there. And the elections part, uh, I think I could do a very good job uh, keeping these elections uh, fair and balanced and going the way they should. Let's talk about the business part of things. And as a person who's operated several businesses in West Virginia, what can the state do to make it easier or more efficient for small businesses? Well, you know, I was uh, I was in a parade in Morgantown. It's funny when people see the Secretary of State sign, they just walk up to you and they'll tell you what that thinks to be, needs to be done. And uh, one of the ladies that walked up to me in that parade, it was raining. She goes, I think you need to update the, the website and make it more user friendly, make it uh, where you can type uh, your stuff into the website and it just sends it instead of having to print out a bunch of stuff and then send it in. Um, basically, user friendliness of the website was her number one concern. Because uh, okay. when you're dealing with the Secretary of State's office, a lot of times that's the first thing you do is you type in to, you know, West Virginia SOS.gov. And then you come up, and if you if you look at that, there's like three different, two or three different splash pages that you can land on, and then you have to get to wherever you need to go, either the business or the election side. Okay. Of it. And I think it's, uh, I, I just listen to the people and let them decide, let me let them tell me what needs to be done. What are some things that you've found over the years of doing business in West Virginia that could be maybe streamlined or more efficient? Uh, yeah, the the, the, the current uh, West Virginia Secretary of State, uh, Mac Warner, has done, I think, a, a pretty good job with that office in the last eight years. And they have, they have streamlined a lot of the processes there. Uh, a lot of it can be just tweaked, I think. Just take what they've did, try to make it a little better, listen to the, the consumers. They'll tell you what needs to be tweaked uh, and then move on from there. In regards to elections and such, Ken, uh, obviously you haven't run elections in the past, but uh, what would be your experience in making sure those can remain fair? Actually, it turns out the county commissioners are the ones in charge of elections. The uh, I don't know if you heard, well, I think last election cycle, Morgan County had an issue up there uh, with one of the voting machines, and mm -hmm. it, it, it the, ha the hammer came down on the county commissioners. They were the ones to, to, to fix the, uh, the problem. Um, and as you know, we do check the ballots, pick precincts, make sure the numbers account, actually hand count the numbers. So mm -hmm. the, the, that's actually, everybody thinks the clerk's office does everything with the elections, but that's actually not true. The county commissioners do sign off on all that. My apologies. I thought that was more clerk driven than county commissioner driven. Well, and I, I also think it's uh, uh, clerk driven. Uh, the county commission do, does sign off on the dollars when you're buying new equipment and the like, and they sign off on the contract for maintaining the equipment. But this is, I think, under the purview of the clerk. The voting part of it. The voting part, it, exactly. But the, the certification of the elections. You know, after oh, I agree with that. Yeah, you're yeah, right. It's a certification yeah, yeah, of elections that yeah. goes to the county commissioners. Right, and then yeah. we randomly pick a couple precincts and then uh, – count them it's it's a long 
boring process. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Ken, looking at the uh, on the web page of uh, uh, Secretary of State, I noticed a couple of things kind of intrigued me. One, to have uh, uh, trademarks is under Secretary of State. I'm not sure how active that that is, but it's a uh, trademark. The other one is notaries. Does that mean the Secretary of State uh, approves of or certifies all the notary republics? The, the notaries, public. yeah, the notaries do are approved from the Secretary of State. Okay, the notaries yeah. have to apply, pay their fee, and then they get a certificate from the Secretary of State saying that they are, are a notary. And for people who don't know exactly what a notary does, is they just witness something, usually a signature. Yeah. And then they sign off saying, I witnessed this signature. It is his signature. And that's what notaries do. And also 501c3s, the, uh, the charitable organizations, all business organizations are under Secretary of State. So it's a, we think of Secretary of State have been an election, but the point, you're, the point that you're making is as much, much broader than just elections. It is much, much broader. There, even the, um, uh, the, the weddings, you can be ordained through the Secretary of State's office if you want to do weddings, because it's kind of like a notary um, in a way. Uh, and there's, there's uh, the security um, private investigators are underneath the Secretary of State's, which I, I don't know how that came to be, but there they are. They're there. Um, so, yes, the Secretary of State's office is a very wide office that covers a lot of different things. So your field these days are is has it surprised you that um, there's all this interest in the Secretary of State's office or um, there there is now yeah. <laughs> you're in a crowded primary yeah there is now and I think mainly uh, I was listening to your thing about the uh, open primaries the open primaries versus closed primaries and I think that all has to do with the Secretary of State's um, uh, who applied for that job. And uh, we had the a, a, Doug Scaff. Yeah, for yeah. for those who don't know, the 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 Democrat minority House leader switched parties. You know, I think maybe in October, and then immediately ran for the Secretary of State's office. I, that, I have no problem with people switching parties. Mm -hmm. You know, coming to the light, and uh, but you probably should go a year or two. You know, get some good votes underneath your belt, and then move on from there. Yeah. Uh, but he decided not to. He's going to jump right in. Another person running is Chris Warner, the brother of Kurt Warner, but also Chris headed up the Republican Party in West Virginia for several years. And that'd be Mac Warner, by the way. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you you said Kurt. I, uh, well, yeah, Mac. I, I did yeah. say Kurt. I meant Mac Warner. You meant Warner. Mac, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, uh, but Chris. A lot of Warners in this yeah, state. Yeah, <laughs> but Chris, but one I was getting ready to make, Chris was, uh, uh, was head of the Republican Party for several years. Yeah, I, that is true. He was. I don't think he was ever elected to that position. I no, think no. he inherited yeah, it. Yeah. I think whoever was elected that position didn't make it, and yeah. then he kind of like swoop, you know, kind of just got pushed exactly. into it. So how does um, so? <laughs> Have you been to Mingo County, Clay County? I mean, you're running a statewide race now, and you have to pick and choose what's a good thing to go to, where you visit, where the um, you know the populace of the voters are, um, where you can gain some traction. Um, I would imagine that's a whole different ball of wax than than running a local race. Yes, it is. It is. But in 2014, I ran for Congress. So I have a little right. experience in this. It was at that Tunsil 14 yeah. County District from Jefferson to Jackson. It's since changed to the pretty much the whole northern uh, part of West Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is brutal. There's no doubt about it. It's all that traveling is tough. But the answer question, the answer to your question is yes, I have. Um, I'm going to be going down to Summers County, Raleigh. There's the um, Republican Executive Committee members are starting to reach out to me, asking me to come to their functions, uh, which is what I need them to do. And uh, I talked to a, a very nice woman the other day on the phone. She tracked me down at the pharmacy, and uh, she said, I need you to come to Summers County. I said, absolutely, give me a date and time. Have you been to every county yet? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I have not been to every so, county yet. Yeah. yeah. It is, it, it's, it, it is um, it's interesting because you brought up another part of the, the equation is, is you got four candidates in this race. Three of them are from the Canal Valley. Mm -hmm. So now you have to, to decide where you're going to spend your time, effort, and money to get the number of votes you need to actually win the race. 
Uh, so you're, I'm constantly, I have a map of West Virginia and I have uh, numbers on there where all the votes come from. It's, I, I look at a giant wrist board. I don't know if anybody's played wrist before. Oh, it's a great game. My family plays this all the time. Yeah. And uh, I look at it like uh, those other three candidates are in Asia. Yeah. And I'm sitting in North America by myself. Kamchatka. You're, you're yes. And if anybody plays wrist, that's where you want to yeah. be because Asia tears each other apart. So. Yeah. That's a tough uh, one. Kent. Uh, oh, go ahead, Bill. Yeah. Uh, what is your 45 second uh, elevator talk? Why should somebody vote? for you uh the 45 i think i'm the best candidate out there to be quite honest with you the uh the but other people then will ask the next question why the why yeah the, so the 45 seconds in the elevator speech so basically I, I think i'm the best candidate out there for this particular job at this particular time all right the big the one of the big issues they have is they're worried about mr scaff who just switched over down there peeling off a small amount of votes and then and getting in there since i'm the only one not in that area they're going to peel off that just due to the, the mailbox effect. Um, I'm the one sitting outside of that area to be able to put a rural Republican into that seat. Well, that is a how you may get elected, but the question is why? Why should you vote for someone? Why should? Because I think besides, I'm the, besides you're the very best. Well, guy. Ken, he did he did cover that at the beginning with his experience in in, in yeah. business yeah. and uh, as a commissioner with elections and such. Yeah, I have a lot of experience in with the Secretary of State's office, uh, both being through the business part of it, dealing with the Secretary of State's office, and actually it was funny about the ordained minister stuff, not minister, but the ordained uh, thing to to do weddings. I actually did my first wedding. Um, about three months ago, mm. a friend of mine called me up and wanted to know if I would do it. And I said, well, let me look into it. And I, then I figured out the process mm. and I went and did it. Yeah. And it, it turned out really, yeah. really nice. Hornby did one too. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. It, for it, uh, one of the family friends. Really a cool experience because mm -hmm. you got, there's just a lot of goodwill and happiness in that room. And, yeah. and I have to say from a personal, well, almost a personal standpoint, my husband, the judge, um, that's one of his favorite parts of his job is Doing performing work. weddings because um, there are some parts that are not so favorite. But, sure. um, you know, like you said, people are happy. They're, um, they're coming in either all dressed up or not, um, but just having a good day. Ken, so. uh, you mentioned the Kanawha County effect there mm -hmm. with three candidates there maybe beating each other up for the votes and such. And we've had precedent now with Patrick Morrissey and Riley Moore with Eastern Panhandle candidates winning a statewide office. And that hadn't been the case uh, for the most part before those two had done that. Do you think the Eastern Panhandle anti-bias is over around the rest of the state, or do you feel like it still does exist somewhat? Uh, that that question, I, I don't really know. Be, you know kind of, everybody looks after their own interests. You know, every area looks after their own interests. So it, it just depends on whether your interests align with that particular interest up there. Like, for example, I think the Northern Panhandle and Eastern Panhandle are, are fairly similar. Uh, just being outside of the, the, the big bulk of the state. Uh, the Northern Panhandle is like a suburb of Pittsburgh. I grew up there, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, most of my family is still back in the Northern Panhandle, and then the Eastern Panhandle is a suburb of D.C. Right. So they, it's a hard – once you in, in this area, 81 or the, the, uh, 81 seems to be divider. You have like more traditional West Virginia once you go to the west of 81, and then if you go to the east, it's a little more urbanish mm -hmm. type of attitudes. I'm always intrigued how you can run a statewide uh, race. Uh, it requires a tremendous amount of money. Uh, you said you ran for Congress a few years ago. That's been, I think, eight years. Or, uh, been, been a few years. People tend to forget names over a period of time. How much of the social media will you utilize as a vehicle? Quite for, a bit. For I, I've been running um, ads on the back on social media for a while now just trying to get name recognition up there uh name recognition is to, is is tough to get out there outside your area uh to, i'm gonna give you an example my 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 wife was getting her hair cut the other day and uh she asked about the governor's race and the the person cutting her hair didn't even know who the candidates were any of them mm -hmm. which so you're spending all this time effort and money trying to get your name recognition there and i haven't spent nearly the amount that those guys yeah. have yeah. And they still don't know who these people are. So it's really, in a way, it's kind of depressing because you're like, I'm trying to get this out there, but it's like they're overwhelmed right now with all the mail pieces and stuff coming in. So you have to you have to take that into consideration when you're looking at your plan. And I think Bill makes a good point. Incredibly expensive. I mean, I've seen sort of a, a trio of three ads that are running together 
on uh, cable television um, for particular candidates, and I have a hard time believing that it's um, it's random, but because these three ads run in sequence each time um, that I'm that I'm watching. So, um, but that's a very expensive proposition. Uh, but cable is better than trying to go to the the networks out of out of the D.C. area. Of Correct. Course. Cable traditionally is a little cheaper than mm-hmm. the, the other things. Yes. And unfortunately, the situation your wife encountered is so real. But that individual that has no idea who's running for governor will probably vote. They may or may not. Yeah, they may or may not. Sure, you, but but I guess I used to say we got to get more voters out. I would always add a caveat: we need to get more educated voters out. Correct. Yeah, I, I'll go with that. But you got to remember, the majority of people don't vote. They just don't. If you look at past yeah. primary and stuff like that, it, the numbers are small. About, fif- about 15%. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. that's, that's, it that's, is what it is. Right. So that's but, why going out and handshaking yeah. and yeah. Mm-hmm. going to Summers County and meeting these people are so important. And I've done a lot of that. I've been all, I've been not all over all 55 counties, but I've been to a lot of the bigger counties and some of the smaller ones I'm going through. I always try to stop. My wife gets on me. She's like, you need to stop talking to a business person. So I'll stop and we'll just, I'll go into some shop and just introduce myself. Say, you know, Ken Rainburn, Secretary of State, you know, is there anything I can do for you? Yeah. And then the uh, conversation goes from there. Mm-hmm. And, and continue this. And we recognize it's a huge hurdle and how best to do it. As you set back initially, as you're doing now, strategic planning, there's two or three major avenues. We mentioned social media is, is a very effective way. But if you have to concentrate between signs, and signs have them both up and down, uh, mailers, which are very expensive, you, there's a limit of number of people you can sit down and knock on the door and talk and shake their hand. So will you concentrate mostly on social media, or will you also try to use signs and mailers as well? Oh, I try to get my trade secrets, are you, though? I see how you're doing. <laughs> they, uh, they, so the other guys can learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, you, you, everybody is sitting in a different position. It's just like the wrist board. So I'm sitting Eastern Peen Handle. My guess is most people don't know who those guys are. Down in Canal, they don't know who I am. So they, they're they going to have to make a strategic decision. How do they affect each other first before they affect me? And then I have to make a decision. Do I ignore the Canal Valley? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, that's a very expensive place to, uh, to, to advertise. And there's already three candidates down there. Do I go for everything else? And that's a decision that you have to kind of work through. There's always Morgantown. There's always Morgantown. I was I lived in Morgantown for six years, so I, I'm and actually my daughters are there now, so I, I do have a little. I have, I have some free workers Can in I ask, Morgantown. Let me ask you a party question too, because this also came up on our Facebook comment section, and, and that had to do with uh, in regards to what party the person in the office belongs to, Secretary of State relatively nonpartisan office you have you have uh, clear duties that you have to do but you've done business under a democrat secretary of state natalie Tennant. you've done business under republican uh secretary of state mac warner is there an appreciable difference between the two parties owning the position in in reality probably not if you're just a pure business person dealing with the secretary of state's office you don't actually deal with natalie or mac you're dealing with usually their staff or just a website in general. That's that's the front of what you're doing. When I f- first opened up business 30 years ago, you know, politics wasn't on my mind at all. You know, I was having kids and worrying about how to pay the bills and sure. all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I dealt with the Secretary of State's office because I had to, to get these businesses open to start with. I, I have, I've learned really quickly that the, the moment you have your – your federal tax ID number, they, they find you. They, they want you, they want that money, man. It's amazing how much mail comes into your mailbox as soon as they got that, that tax ID number. You know, they, they do a pretty good job finding you to, to get everything squared up. Um, and I think that secretary's office should be fairly, actually nonpartisan. It should be treated pr- the same way I treat people with the, the pharmacy in a professional manner, that, irregardless of what party you are. What drives you to, uh, to want to run for secretary of state oh my wife thinks i'm nuts <laughs> <laughs> but other than that yeah i, I don't know I, I i got a kinkling for the public service part of it, it when i when i was a county commissioner there's some you could do a lot of good uh there um in, in the case secretary of state you can get out and you can 
get people to sign up to vote and you could push them to maybe learn about the candidates because you hit it right on the, the head uh you got to know who you're voting for you just can't go in there and just check mark boxes that's that's when you get a disaster and uh, i think secretary of state could do a very fine job of that going out getting these young people to vote put in the importance of learning about those candidates and where they are uh, with your views and their views and and that's huge you know four years down the road i mean my kids and me and then i look at me and my father we have completely different ideas of how things should go and whatnot and so i, I tell my kids all the time i said you guys are going to be in charge here in about five ten years so i need you to be prepared know how the game works who you're voting for and try to, to move down that direction do you think it's become more or less difficult to do the research that it takes to truly understand a candidate because obviously um, when you're putting together materials you're creating a website you're you're putting out um, information on social media you're going to put your best foot forward and as will your opponent so how do people find out um, the true story, so to speak. I mean, we obviously we have local media that um, hopefully pre presents a fair and, and equitable um, uh, showing of, of candidates, but do you think people will take the time to do that? And how would they? I think most people try. Mm -hmm. it, it is hard. Uh, a lot of people nowadays get their, their – information from yeah. the internet yeah okay so and then you gotta remember the internet is just a free-for-all so what i i just if i tell you what i do is i work off a bell curve so i'll go out look for information on people knowing that there's going to be just basically lies and misinformation out there and usually those are on the ends of the bell curve so then you look toward the middle and kind of look and see what more reputable sources um, are saying and then you can kind of just blend it together and from that point on, I think you have a decent idea who these people are. Okay. And I wouldn't trust, you know, anything verbatim off the Internet uh, or Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Because the whole misinformation is like is the, half the key to politics nowadays. They just put out wrong stuff about the people and then they see it once And then or keep twice. repeating it. Well, yeah. Well, same thing. Before it was mailers. You know, if you didn't have the money to fight the... The misconception put down the miller if that person saw that mailer three times it's the truth ken reed is our guest he's a candidate for secretary of state and ken uh the current holder of the office mac warner has come out very strongly in favor of in-person voting whenever possible in terms of absentee ballots only when absolutely necessary if you become secretary of state what are your thoughts? The way people vote around this country is varied based on the state that they live in. Very varied. I think what we do right now is fine. With the uh, early voting, uh, you have a chance to vote, you know, 10 days ahead of time. You can go in and vote. I am, if it's not, I'm a firm, I've, I've been in business a long time. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Because yeah. you're, you're entering, you're, you put unintended consequences is what you're trying to mitigate and uh, I, I don't think there has been any problem in west virginia so and i don't think we've changed the secretary of state laws or how they vote and i don't know when the last time it was changed but just leave it be i think we're doing just fine the way we are early voting you got 10 days to vote yeah. one of the bills that's in front been debated in the house now is house bill 4017 among other things it would make it illegal for a table to be set up in a co on a college campus Registering folks to vote, it'd make it illegal to serve water. Bill, did it specifically say it would make it illegal to have a table, it, or did John it, Hornbuckle no, just take that out yeah, to the logical? It said it, it said it could make it illegal to set up a table at a college, offering water and cookies, and encouraging people to register. But I, I think that Sean was simply taking a premise and taking it out to maybe an illogical conclusion. I don't know that that's necessarily in the language of the bill. The bill talks about coercing people yeah. to vote. I don't think it says specifically you can't have a table and set up cookies, does it? You, no, you may well be right. I'm just reading what was in the, the verbiage as you well. Yeah, but that, that's Sean Hornbuckle's yeah, verbiage. The point that you're making is that, yeah, there can be interpretation, yes. and it doesn't necessarily reflect what's in the bill. I've not read the bill word for word. Okay. So. What was your question for Ken then? 
I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, I, I guess well, what it was well, was how much would you get involved with the legislators as uh, they walk through the, uh, the bill making? So there's two parts of this. Yeah. I've actually saw a bunch of those bills uh, that were piled up in judiciary on election stuff. You got to remember, it is an election cycle. And a lot of these bills, I think they're not going to make it. They're going to go over the Senate and die. And I think it's more these these uh, delegates are trying to tell their constituents that they're doing this because that's what their constituents want to see. Most of those bills, I don't think it's going to make it through. Uh, your second part of your question, which was, would I get involved with election law when I get elected? And the answer is absolutely. So the the um, Chuck Flannery, who was in, who was running the show down there for a little while, was a friend of mine, and he mm -hmm. used to call it incoming. They had incoming, you know, bills. It's like the bombs blowing up. So they would look at every bill and then try to decide whether or not it was proper or acceptable to the Secretary of State's office. And then they would intervene one way or another to either to push the bill, if it is a very good bill, or kill the bill if it's a horrid bill. And you, sometimes you have a little bit of both. You, there's lots of bills down there that just need to die. Ken, final minute is yours. Well, I, I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, I think that uh, we have a very good chance of winning this Secretary of State's office. I don't think we've ever had a Secretary of State from the Eastern Panhandle. I don't know for sure, but I don't think we have. Yeah. Uh, and the I like the fact that our that it's starting to spread out or those constitutional officers aren't so just tied to the canal in Charleston. I think it's a good idea to have these officers, you know, from different parts of the state because it gives you a different perspective uh, on, the, on the state. It's a very wide and varied state uh, with the people in it. And um, I just, uh, I just hope people uh, will look at the candidates and I'm asking for their vote. And uh, I think that we could do a good job pushing West Virginia forward the way we have when I was a delegate and a, and a county commissioner. Uh, quite a question, Ken, I meant to ask and I didn't until now. And that is, if you win, what do you have to do with your businesses, if anything? I don't think I'll do anything with them. Now, some of them, some of them run by themselves. Like our, our the pharmacies right now, I have extremely good employees. Uh, I've got people who've worked with very little turnover. I have a hard time finding new people, but the people that are there have been there for 20, 30 years. They're like, they're known to the community well. So they run a very tight ship. Uh, so those, I, I just kind of just watch and, you know, maybe tweak a little bit. But for those who don't know, there is a Secretary of State's office out of Martinsburg. Uh, there's yes. one in Clarksburg also. Uh, so I, I plan to bounce to each one and work out of those offices. Uh, that's why you have an office, right? Yeah. Ken, good luck to you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you stopping by. I uh, appreciate you having me. Ken Reed, running for Secretary of State.